there, Mr. Wilson here again for part three of going through the topic of differentiation for the GCSE Further Maths. Now, this could also apply to uh, any of you out there that might be studying an A-level in maths because one of the first things that you look at in calculus is differentiation. Uh, now, this is sort of specific, well, mostly targeted towards the GCSE Further Maths who only need to look at differentiation, whereas a level you you then go on to um, integration and the different types of differentiation and integration so for this video in the uh, we're going to talk about how we actually sub in to find gradients because in the previous videos we've been looking at the gradient function but we've not actually subbed in the x coordinate to find the gradient we've just found the gradient function so that's what we're going to do in this video and um, if you have liked these videos so far then then please let me know in the comments because um, it's always nice to hear that people find them uh, useful and, and helpful and that they uh, like my explanations right then let's jump straight into it so first things first let's just recap so imagine we've got the um, we've got the function uh, y equals uh, 3x plus 2 now dy by dx, the, the derivative, the gradient function, we times by the power, take one off the power. Now hopefully with more and more practice this just sort of becomes natural over time and eventually you can just look at a function and, and be able to differentiate it without having to sort of really think about the process. But if you differentiate this you just get 3 because the x term will disappear and the plus 2 will completely disappear when, when you derive um, it. Now that's, that's really weird, right? Because as we've, we've talked about in previous examples, look, there's usually an x term in the answer and we have to sub in an x coordinate to find the gradient. Whereas here, well, there's nothing to sub in. There's no x value here to be able to sub in. It's just three. So that means that the gradient, regardless of the x coordinate, will always be three. Well, that's super weird, isn't it? Well, actually, that totally makes sense because what we've got here is we've got a line. It's in the form, as, as you might remember from the, the normal GCSE days, y equals mx plus c, right? Where the plus c part, well, that's the y-intercept and the m is the gradient of the line. And remember, because it's a, a line, the gradient is the same anywhere on that line, right? So it could look something like this um, and you've got... Um, a line that goes up like that and it goes through the y-axis at some point but the gradient is constant it's a line it doesn't change so actually this makes perfect sense that the gradient will be 3 anywhere on that line because well we knew that anyway because m is the gradient that's in front of the x the gradient is 3 so actually differentiation what I want us to show here can actually show us something we sort of already knew but it's a really nice way of, of looking at it um, calculus will tell us the same answer as, as something that's actually from a different part of uh, mathematics so quite a nice little link there but let's have a look at something where we do actually need to to sub in an x coordinate so let's look at the equation y equals um, 2x squared plus 3x well the derivative of this will be 4x plus 3 you times by the power, take 1 off the power. Now if x is 1, for example, then all we need to do is just sub in 1 into this, into the, the derivative. So let's, let's do that. So dy by dx. Now traditionally this is sort of written like this. You draw a line going down like this, and then you put x equals 1 if we want to know when x equals 1, x could be 2 or 3, it will say in the question if it was asking us to find a gradient at a point. Um, so if x is 1, we we'll do 4 times 1 plus 3, that's going to give us 7. So this tells us that the gradient of the line at this, uh, at the tangent that touches this point would be 7. Let's try another one, and then hopefully this will make some kind of sense. So let's say we've got the... Um, equation y equals 3x cubed plus 7x squared plus 2. 
well, the derivative of this, again, through practice, it just becomes more and more natural. We times by the power, we take one off the power, so we get 9x squared plus 14x, and that plus 2 will disappear. And again, let's just say that x is 1, just for simplicity, dy by dx, when x is equal to 1. We're going to get 9 times 1 squared plus 14 times 1. So that's going to be 9 plus 14, so that's going to be 23. So the gradient will be 23 at the x-coordinate when the x-coordinate is 1. Okay, well, what happens if they don't just want the gradient, but they want the full equation of the tangent to that line? So let's just cut back to this one up here, this 2x squared plus 3x. Now, because it's a um, squared graph, well, we know it's going to have some sort of U-shape. Now, I don't really know what the shape is going to look like, but I assume it's got to be something that's sort of... It's going to be a U-shape in some kind. Now, we're wanting the gradient when X is 1, so that could be, I don't know, somewhere over here. Um, and this has a gradient of 7. We've just worked that out, haven't we? Yeah, gradient of 7. Now, again, my sketch is absolutely not brilliant. In actual fact, I believe the u-shape is probably going to be on this side due to the way this equation is written, but that's not massively essential to visualise what I'm getting at here. Um, because what I'm trying to get at is, if we want to know the, the equation of this line, this tangent, well then we, we need all the parts of the equation of line. Now, there are actually two different ways you can write the equation of line. y equals mx plus c, which I already mentioned uh, previously. But the um, other way is y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. Now I'm going to use y equals mx plus c for this just because I think people are more familiar with that. But I will have a separate video on this y minus y1 um, other equation because personally that's the one I would use. But I think people are more familiar with y equals mx plus c. So if y equals mx plus c then, then let's add in all the bits of info. Well, let's add the bit of info that we know, which is that the gradient is 7. So we know it's y equals 7x plus c. We just need to find what the y-intercept is. Now, in order to find the y-intercept, you need two bits of info. You need the x-coordinate and you need the y-coordinate because you sub them both in. And as long as that coordinate is on the line, which it definitely is because it's the tangent at that point, then we can solve for c. So... We have the x-coordinate, we do have the y-coordinate. But we do know that y is equal to 2 times the x-coordinate squared plus 3 times the x-coordinate. So in other words, y is equal to 2 times 1 squared plus 3 times 1. Now the biggest mistake that students make here is that they accidentally sub 1 into the gradient function, not the original function. That is the biggest mistake and then they end up getting the wrong y-coordinate. What they've actually found is they found the gradient again, rather than the, the y-coordinate. So that tends to be the biggest mistake. So y is equal to 5, because 2 plus 3 is 5. So we can sub these two bits in to find c. So y is equal to... Uh, sorry. 5 is equal to 7 times 1, because x is 1, remember, plus c. 5 is equal to 7 plus c, so c must be equal to negative 2. So therefore, my final answer will be that the equation of this tangent is going to be y equals 7x minus 2. Like so. And that will be the equation of the tangent at that point. Okay, let me illustrate with, a, with another example. So let's use our one that we looked at earlier. So this cubic here. Same idea applies. So we know that the tangent is going to be the form y equals mx plus c. And we've already discovered that the gradient is 23. So y equals 23x plus c. And we just need the x and y coordinate. The x coordinate is 1. But the y coordinate, well, y is equal to 3 times 1 cubed. Because remember, we used the original function, not the gradient function. Plus 7 times 1 squared plus 2. So 3 plus 7 plus 2 that's going to be 12, so y is equal to 12, and then we just sub in. So y, uh, 12 is equal to 23 times 1 plus c, 12 is equal to 23 plus c, 
So C must be equal to negative 11. And therefore we can put all the pieces together to get our equation for the tangent. The tangent is going to have the equation y equals 23x minus 11 in this example here. So a really, really common question when you are differentiating is not just finding that gradient, but actually finding the equation of the tangent to the curve. And if you've differentiated, when the questions usually say find the equation of the tangent to the curve, as soon as it says tangent, I'm immediately thinking differentiate. And once you've differentiated and found the gradient, it's just sort of as simple as subbing in some values to get the y-intercept and then putting everything together at the end. So that tends to be the sort of most common um, type of question. Okay, so I'm going to let you have a go at a practice question then. So practice, y is equal to, um, and I wrote it down earlier, so let me just make sure I get it right, y equals 5x squared minus 3x plus 7. Um, so I want the equation of the tangent when x is equal to 1. Okay. So pause the video now, have a go at that question, see if you can uh, get the final answer and then we'll talk about it in a second. Okay, so hopefully you've had time to answer that question. Let's run through the answer then and see if my answer compares up with yours. So, first things first, again, if it's talking about equation of a tangent, differentiate. That must, that's got to be the first job. So dy by dx is equal to 10x take away 3. Okay, if x is 1, then dy by dx, when x is 1, is going to be 10 times 1 take away 3. So it's going to be 7. So the gradient is 7 at this point. So our equation of a tangent is going to be in the form y equals 7x plus c. Now we just need the x and the y coordinate. Well, y is equal to 5 times 1 squared take away 3 times 1 plus 7. So 5 take away 3 is 2 plus 7 is 9. So y is equal to 9. So then we can just sub in y is equal to 9 x is equal to 1 into this equation up here to find c. So 9 is equal to 7 times 1 plus c. 9 is equal to 7 plus c. c must equal 2, positive 2. So our final answer is y is equal to 7x plus 2. Now, let me know in the comments if that's the answer that you got. I mean, that is absolutely brilliant. If you've followed this video all this way and then got that answer, then that's obviously definitely something to be to be proud of. It's not an easy topic. Not everyone does GCSE further maths, and it's definitely something to be proud of when we get those um, sort of steps right and, and it sort of finally sinks in. It's a kind of a big achievement uh, when the penny finally drops. So well done if you got that answer. If you didn't quite get that answer or you don't really understand where that's come from, then definitely consider dropping some comments below and, and I'll be more than happy to answer those questions. In the next video, we're going to look at stationary points. What are they and how can we use differentiation to work out the stationary points? So, all I want to say is I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you have a fantastic day.